In this problem, a small block is released from rest at the top of a wedge, and as it slides down the wedge, which has a frictionless surface, the wedge gets pushed to the left and slides to the left across the frictionless surface that it's sitting on. So this problem is going to be a good example of one that involves both conservation of momentum and conservation of energy. So first, we're looking for the velocity of the wedge as it moves to the left when the block reaches the bottom of the ramp. We're told that the block has a velocity of 4.6 meters per second to the right as it reaches the bottom of the ramp. So to find the velocity of the wedge, we're going to use conservation of momentum. Initially, the block and the wedge are at rest, so the initial momentum of both of them together is the final momentum of the system is going to be the momentum of the wedge plus the momentum of the block. So applying conservation momentum, we know that the initial momentum of zero has to equal the final momentum. So the momentum that the wedge has to the left is going to have to equal the momentum that the block has to the right. That gives the wedge a velocity of 7.886 meters per second to the left. The negative sign is showing that it's moving to the left. The second thing that we're asked for is to find what height the block started from. So to solve this, we're going to use the idea of conservation of energy. At the beginning, we have the block sitting at the top of the ramp at a height h, and so we have potential energy that's stored in that block. And neither the block or the wedge are moving, so the initial kinetic energy is zero. When the block reaches the bottom of the ramp, the potential energy of the block is zero. And the kinetic energy that we have is the kinetic energy of both the block and the wedge. Notice as we were setting this up, we didn't worry about potential energy in the wedge because the height of the wedge never changes. The only thing that's changing height is the block, so there's only potential energy that's stored in the block. And so now we're going to use conservation of energy, where the initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy will equal the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy of the wedge, 1 half times 3.5 kilograms times 0.7886 meters per second squared, gives 6.348 joules. And the kinetic energy of the block, 1 half times 0.6 kilograms times 4.6 meters per second squared, gives 1.0882 joules. And so together at the end, we have 7.4362 joules of energy. So that means that the block must have started with 7.4362 joules of potential energy, and so that allows us to find the height. 0. 0.6 times 9.8 is 5.88, so we have 5.88h equals 7.4362 joules, which gives us that the height that the block started from is 1.2646 meters. So again, in this problem, the energy that we had that was stored in just the block when it was at the top of the ramp turned into kinetic energy of both the wedge and the block together. And so one of the most common mistakes is to just look at the kinetic energy that the block has at the bottom and say that that's the potential energy that the block had to have at the top. But when the block is at the bottom, both the wedge and the block are moving. And so the energy that both of them have together is what potential energy needed to be stored in the block. 